It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. 5.45 might be a stretch. Oh, now that we have this big clock behind us, Joe, uh, harder to fool people when we get a little bit of a late start. Uh, we've got uh, still all the Friday gadgets that we're going to whip out, headlines, shenanigans like that. Joe, I'll turn it your way to tell him what's coming up here on deck. All right. Tonight, fires and explosions in downtown. Last night's special select board meeting and BUHS boys tennis and more. You always uh, outrun the clips there. Got to, uh... Oh! There we go. Back up. <laughs> Colonel's Tennis, Varsity Boys. I got to make those clips shorter for the script. All right. Uh, all that and more. We do it in 15 minutes today. We're going to do it in 9 minutes and 30 seconds. So even if you've got uh, some attention span issues, hopefully you still got time to stick with us here on Don't 545 blame. Live. I'm standing with Senator Vincent Luzzi. I like this guy because I feel he's a he's a doer, and in government we need people who can get things done, not talk about it. So, Senator, with that little introduction, thank you. Welcome to Brattleboro. Thank you, and it's a real pleasure to be here again. Welcome back uh, to this May June June 8th, uh, 2012 edition of 5:45 Live. I'm Roland Boyden, alongside Joe Bushy. The show 5:45 Live. It's a roundup. I like to think of us as perhaps media aggregators, content gatherers, uh, yep. getting to, uh, together and condensing the best of what uh, all Brattle Bros local news outlets have whipped up for you during the day. Uh, we'll just launch right into the stories here as I take a look at uh, we'll take what we're from 5:45. Yeah, and, uh, the Pulse of Brattle Bros. Yeah, I guess yeah. <laughs> we'll uh, plug that first. Uh, that is showing in its entirety this week on BC TV uh, from Strolling in the Heifers Gallery Walk. Uh, what a what a weekend! It was got a little soggy there at one point, but uh, really. Uh, uh, they they send it over the top with uh, great success every year. So uh, you were out there with Daryl enjoying uh, the on the street stuff. Uh, it was a really over the top event, and uh, um, I, you know I don't know. Uh, I, I think some of the merchants have concerns about it that they're starting to voice uh, through some different social networking. But uh, by and large, it certainly seems to be what they originally started at Gallery Walk for, with uh, a good good turnout for the uh, for the town. So. Excellent. All right, uh, let's launch into this teleprompter thing here. Cardboard box teleprompter. Uh, you want to start us off here? All right, downtown yesterday, shortly after 11 a.m. By the time Roland arrived, smoke was all that remained as the Brattleboro Fire Department swiftly controlled the blaze. Sorry, uh, all, all residents were evacuated safely, were they? Yes, indeed. Uh, they, uh, very, very swift uh, in terms of how the Brattleboro Police Department handled this. Uh, they do have plenty of practice at this point, so uh, yeah, uh, that, it was good to, to see them uh, in action. Uh, got the uh, the wave here from Assistant Fire Chief Pete Lynch, you'll see as he walks by, giving us the, uh, <laughs> the go-ahead there. Uh, that uh, footage... Close um, call, according to Lynch, given yeah. the size of the aging wooden building. Yeah, indeed. Uh, that was not the only uh, thing in flames yesterday. Uh, we got a tip off uh, to head down to uh, uh, Canal Street uh, by the co-op where uh, Sir Sosimo Lumber Truck had caught fire. Our, our uh, 545 Live content specialist, Nolan Edgar. Um, Beat feet down there? Yeah, he, he headed on down there uh, to, to catch that, and we've got that clip as well. One of the tractors for this tractor trailer caught fire in the engine compartment while the driver was sitting at the traffic light. Um, well, we got here, put it out. Nobody got hurt. Next, Brattleboro Varsity Boys Tennis had their dreams of another Cinderella story cut short this week as they lost in the semifinals, but not before beating the odds to get land a playoff berth, surprising everyone, including their coach Phil Natowich, who caught up with the 545 Live content specialist Nancy Safonic after the tournament. Kids had a great year. We uh, went a lot further than a lot of people thought we would, and I'm really happy with uh, how they play right up through today. Next year is going to be an adventure. <laughs> we'll see when that comes around. Did a robbery in broad daylight on Elliott Street Wednesday morning has landed himself a top story in the Brattleboro Daily Reformer as we recap the paper's crime log. According to police documents cited in the article, Robert Ford took $50 in cash from a couple on Elliott Street after approaching them in their parked car and threatening them with a knife until the 
couple surrendered the cash through the window. The victims then followed Ford as they left on foot to try and regain their losses, even exiting the car with a pipe wrench. However, Brattleboro Police Department responded to the scene before a confrontation occurred and arrested Ford without incident. There you go. Uh, and we'll continue our crime report, courtesy of the Brattleboro Reformer, here with a 39-year-old Brattleboro resident, Jonathan Dar- Darling, uh, who has been charged with aggravated assault with a weapon uh, and simple assault after he allegedly slashed a 17-year-old in the parking lot uh, of the Putney Road McDonald's. Let's see if I can get the, uh, the over-the-shoulder shot here. There we go, in the newsroom for us. Um, and then all that story, uh, according to restaurant employees at McDonald's who witnessed uh, the event, um, and according to uh, BPD Lieutenant Bob Kirkpatrick, uh, the victim did not know uh, his assailant making the case even stranger at this point. So um, the uh, police uh, listed uh, Jonathan Darling under uh, more than five aliases in that uh, Reformer article. More details can be found there. You can also find them at reformer.com, brattlebrillreformer.com, and they've got a Facebook page as well. And a smartphone app. There you go. Where you can view the articles for free by downloading the smartphone app. And even share them and email them. So, uh, what, a, what a wonderful, wonderful world of media. Technology. Uh, it's a beautiful thing, right? Uh, all right, uh, who's up next? Why don't we do our select board report? Do I have a little uh, image for that? That's a, a question for us. I'll, I'll throw it your way, Joe, and we'll jump into the uh, All right, the select board select was back board in action last night for a special meeting regarding new police and fire facilities. That's something that's been in the uh, pipeline for 20-something years or better and still has eyebrows raised from members of the board who voiced their concerns following the PowerPoint presentation. West Brattleboro is pl- prone to flooding which would be the primary concern. And so to get to the West Brattleboro Station, if we had flooding, would mean that we would have to go through Guilford to get there. I don't think that that's a good plan. Well, America's nationwide public transportation woes continue in our fair state, with Greyhound announcing plans last week to indefinitely suspend service between Springfield, Mass., and White River, cutting Brattleboro out of the mix entirely. And while it now appears the state has plans to subsidize the route to keep it open for the remainder of the year, long-term plans remain uncertain. Wednesday, we sat down with House Transportation Committee member Molly Burke, Brattleboro's District 3-1 rep, who said it's time for Vermont to focus on one of the nation's oldest means of transportation, the train. If somebody doesn't own a car, it is a very, yep. very serious situation. That's right. Some people can't drive. Some people cannot afford to, to have a car. We have a wonderful train service once a day through, through Vermont, and I want to advertise that if you want to go travel in Vermont on the train, you cannot beat that. All right, a few things before we wrap up. Uh, we'll go into the calendar ever so briefly um, and uh, take a look at uh, the next stages in Putney. Tonight they'll play host to Vermont Governor Madeline Kuhn and Vermont's first female governor, and uh, actually the uh, only the fourth female governor at that point, uh, in uh, the history of the United States when she took office. Um, t- nearly three decades ago, she's uh, in Putney to present her latest book, The New Feminist Agenda, Defining the Next Revolution for Women, Work, and Family. And uh, I'll throw it back your way, Joe, to talk about the uh, BCTV side oh, yeah. of our wrap-up here. And for BCTV viewer types, there's still plenty of time to watch The Strong of the Heifers with an 8 p.m. rebroadcast on this year, Channel 8 followed at 9.25 with the Compass School's annual film festival collection. There we go. We did manage to pack it in, uh, Joe, to uh, Look, we 10 got, minutes. We got yeah. one minute left. One minute to spare, which is good, because uh-huh. I've got a somewhat so humorous uh, end credits gag reel that uh, you might remember. Uh, oh. So we'll jump into that. But first, uh, I'll just say thanks to everybody that makes 545 Live tick the way it does, including you viewers for supporting us, uh, for everyone that gets us content like Nolan Edgar, Nancy Stefanik, uh, Vlasta Papelka, who is up here calming me down as I frantically tried to get everything together, pulling my hair out. She's awfully good at that. Joe, uh, you for speeding she has experience in here. At that. <laughs> for speeding in here at the last minute to join me at the desk. We really appreciate everything everybody does. We'll be back Monday, 545 p.m. right here on Channel 8. We'll see you then. Huh? Okay, we're ready? All right, well, hey, we hope you enjoyed this show. A lot of stuff happening. I don't know what we got. I did not see any hoogalism or whatever. Who the, who the, what, what? Who look at this?
Now, hooliganism, thank you, John. <laughs> I can't speak good. Hooliganism out here. Whoa, are we trading? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow, Cora, you little, was I happy?